Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. controls. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, once more to Frankenstein Control. Wait, are we recording? Yes, we're recording right oh. now. Oh. Uh, as of this recording, we are recording, uh, it is currently Hell Night, uh, also known as Mischief Night, uh, the night before Halloween. Uh, why, it's Halloween's Eve. It is indeed, and I sincerely hope that's why Taylor is covered in toilet paper and eggs. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll say that. Yep, yep, because I have no desire to pry. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> How about a desire to pry this fucking egg toilet off me? Uh, no, I assume that, you know what, that's your costume now. Oh, okay. I expect you to come to work like that tomorrow. I come to work like that every day, be right. That's true. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Lots to get to tonight. Uh, first, a very brief word from our sponsor. Oh! We are brought to you this evening by the DC Metro Transit System, uh, who want to make everyone aware of new policies they're implementing soon to greatly improve rider experience. Good. Uh, according to their new budget proposal, uh, they're going to start by lowering fare costs, making each train eight cars long to allow more passengers to board, mm -hmm. uh, extending rush hour times to 10 a.m. and 8.30 p.m., Oh. And lastly, uh, eliminating the nightly 12 a.m. Uh, train to hell from that Hey Arnold episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Metro Car 29. So uh, look for those changes this fiscal year. Okay, good. They're also opening the Black Line, which is goes straight to the Halloween Dimension. It's a very popular train. <laughs> Halloween Dimension is DC's hottest new club. <laughs> it's just filled with a whole bunch of hot topic kids. It's basically just Spirit Halloween yeah. all the months that is in October. Yeah, all, yeah. The, all the unused, like off, you know, mm -hmm. out of season Halloween shit. They just let you party <laughs> and drink around it, and some guy plays Skrillex <laughs> up on a. Uh... Oh man, I'm gonna dance next to this sexy, mm. this sassy Rick Grimes outfit. Somebody puts on like a, a, a Skrillex track and mixes it with like a spooky sound CD, and <laughs> everyone takes ecstasy, so it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Anyhow, on to the news. Uh, it's bad. Very bad. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, all terrible. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we still got to cover it, though, so we're going to focus uh, more on some details that may have snuck past you while you were focused on, uh, you know, the uh, nonstop train ride of horror, the tragedies and the terrorism and such. Reports from White House aides claim that President Trump has gone forward with plans to custom order a gigantic couch-sized rubber eraser uh, with which he intends to chase around trans people in public after an idea he got from an Animaniacs episode. <laughs> Uh, when talking about the project in ad hoc interviews, Trump has further stated that it will be one of those ones with the black parts on the back for erasing ink like they said in middle school. Uh, <laughs> oh, the egg on his face when he finds out those erasers are shit! <laughs> the president said he intends to use this part of the eraser uh, on parts of the Constitution which, in his words, are outdated and impede progress. <laughs> Uh, this just in today, a notorious Boston mobster, Whitey Bulger, uh, was found dead in prison today of an apparent homicide, a violent end to a violent story. Upon closer inspection, however, the body was revealed to be Johnny Depp in extensive makeup and prosthetics. The real, <laughs> the real Whitey remains at large. <laughs> Megyn Kelly is out at NBC after comments she made regarding blackface as an acceptable Halloween costume choice, so long as it was done to portray a specific character who was black, uh, as this was done all the time when she was a kid. Uh, when an incredulous guest asked Kelly just which character she had portrayed in such a manner, uh, Kelly grew subdued and after a pause said, we, we were human versions of the crows from Dumbo. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Lastly, a so-called migrant caravan of as many as several thousand refugees has been approaching the southern border of the United States for a few weeks now. The convoy appears to be made up of residents from many Central American countries, uh, fleeing drug war violence and harsh economic conditions with the ultimate goal of applying for asylum in America. Although still more than a thousand miles away, the caravan has inflamed already volatile political tensions in the U.S., uh, particularly ahead of our midterm elections next week. Uh, by the way, everyone, vote. Yeah, vote, you fuckers. Fucking 
Seriously, fucking vote. Go out and fucking vote. <laughs> Grab your friends. Kidnap your friends. Go yeah. put them in a van. Drive them to their voting place of, of choice, of, of need, or whatever. They're gonna, just do it. I think fucking vote. Ride sharing services are doing free rides to the polls as well. Wait, like Uber and shit? Yeah. Okay, hey, y'all got a free ride. Lyft is, I think, for sure. Get a lift and lift <laughs> this country out of the shithole it's become. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, in response to the situation with the, the migrant caravan, uh, President Trump will be deploying, this is real, uh, over 5,000 troops to the U.S.-Mexico border to strengthen operations there. Uh, these will all nominally be support units and are not authorized to detain people or use any level of force, uh, although an inside source revealed on Monday that uh, emergency special training sessions for these units have consisted solely of watching the helicopter door gunner scene from Full Metal Jacket on YouTube. Oh, no. No, no, no. Regarding the migrants themselves, uh, President Trump has been advised by human rights groups that many of the prospective immigrants are women and children, and uh, not hordes of criminals, as he has claimed in the past. Uh, in response, Trump tweeted on Sunday, We cannot let those kids in. Too much is at stake here, people. We let those immigrant kids swarm in here, and what's going to happen next? They're going to attend our American public schools. And then, inevitably, some are going to die in school shootings, and it's all going to give credence to the Democrats' claims that there's a lot of things really fucking wrong with this country right now. <laughs> this is too real. <laughs> this is too real. Oh, no. oh God. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, pretty much brings us up to the present moment, unless anything horrible happens during this recording, which is entirely within the realm of possibility. Oh, 100%. No, definitely. I have very little doubt that something <laughs> awful will happen between now and me uploading this Thursday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, have a happy Halloween, kids. Be safe. Uh, br bring your uh, very own uh, taser slash stun gun. Uh, just do it all. Uh, on an unrelated note, welcome to Frankenstein fucking control, <laughs> biggest downer podcast on the <laughs> fucking internet, and all we're doing is reporting events. <laughs> Which are true. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> For the most part. I'm your favorite crisis actor, Taylor Russell. Supplied by crowds on demand. <laughs> Supplied by crowds on demand. To the left of me is the very important figure within the Democratic Party's... <laughs> Internal structure, uh, the accountant for the entire Democratic Party, Ada Ship. Hi, I'm Ada, and soon I'll just be a little pile of rubbed off eraser bits. Just gone. No one will know. He's trying to rub you out. Oh, yep. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want any sort of rub from that man. No, 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 no. Nobody I don't think. Does. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> and uh, in front of me, as always, is B Rye. I'm B Rye, and because of the alpine pallor of my skin I'm the only white block member of Antifa <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> and welcome to our normally comedy podcast but uh, you make enough jokes about real events and then suddenly you realize just what a horrible hell world you're living in yeah. so I wasn't a drummer in school Let's change the subject! <laughs> it's Halloween tomorrow, although it's going to be yesterday for all you fuckers listening today! Well, Assuming it's... you're listening on the day we release, which you should, Thursdays, every day on YouTube and LipSign. Share us on Facebook, share us on the Twitter, share us on the Reddits. <laughs> Do it! It'll be All Saints Day for them, which is still spooky. All uh, Saint, What is a saint if not a ghoul? <laughs> <laughs> the new, the new, the new, the new motto of the Catholic Church. <laughs> the new, uh, the new album from Ghost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, with their new uh, front runner. Since they had to get rid of that guy who embezzled all their monies, yeah, uh, they got a new front runner. Uh, he looks a lot like Post Malone, but trust me, he's not Post Malone. Definitely not. Uh. They got him because uh, they found him on the street in a trash bag, and they said, that man looks like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now they're touring. They're touring in uh, several Scandinavian countries that you can't pronounce the name of. <laughs> <laughs> several uh, Ikea-y countries. <laughs> 
You remember today at work when we were just talking in Ikea furniture and everyone thought we were crazy? <laughs> that happens a lot with us. <laughs> Ikea furniture, it's like, it's literally like one of the lowest forms of humor. Just, <laughs> Torbjorn! <laughs> but they all sound so funny. That's the problem. It was... It wouldn't be so easy if it wasn't so easy. Yeah. You know? It's it's beautiful. I, I want to purchase an IKEA Grookvald. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shelving unit. Come to IKEA, get our meatballs, otherwise known as bork forks. <laughs> but what about a Gornfalben? <laughs> Dude, don't you fucking talk it, to me about Gorn Forbins. The Gorn Forbin will hold all of your dango horgans. <laughs> Ikea is now selling a, uh, a very retro 90s style couch called the Morgendorfer. <laughs> 90s style couch. What, is that the, like the, the couch from Snick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a big orange couch with teenagers on it included. Morgendorfer was Daria's last name, by the way. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. As a 90s joke. <laughs> um, how, why is it so hard to find a fucking list of Ikea furniture? I'll go to offers. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you gotta search for furniture. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have that, that, when you type furniture, it has to have that crazy O with the slanted line through it. Yeah. <laughs> like the... Oh my god, I think Ikea's website has wised the fuck up and stopped putting their silly names right on the front. Because really? like, like, all of them are like, limited time offers, all duvet cover sets, and like, get 10% off at the Ikea kitchen. And it's just like, what? But what about, what, what if I want 10% off of my Tugel flank? <laughs> they they uh, tried as hard as they could to like put things into contemporary American English just to, you know, cut down on the mockery, but they can't, you know, quite do it all the way. You know, it's like, <laughs> enjoy this festive rug before you all head out to the discotheque. <laughs> And for all your kitchen disposal needs, this small trash can will be able to handle most waste needs. Come and get the bimf. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Frankie Seconds Rolls sponsored by Bimf. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, it's so good. <laughs> It's just a wealth. It's a gold mine. Yeah. Just go into an Ikea and point at any given furniture and you'll get a giggle. <laughs> as long as you say it with emphasis and and uh, confidence. You must confi- Nobody is like... <laughs> <laughs> just just like look up uh, the names of a bunch of Skyrim characters and then ask for those as uh... yo can I get a Farangar <laughs> I'd like to order the Shigorath please <laughs> How's, uh, is the Balgriff still available Balgriff nice that's right y'all Balgriff the greater how much does the Balin cost <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Do you have replacement parts for the Jormungand? <laughs> that's the world serpent from actual myth. Oh. <laughs> I fucked that one up. <laughs> you fucking yeast grimoire. <laughs> oh, that's a thing. Um, my cousin, Travis, and his lovely wife, Maddie, they came back from a big ol' honeymoon in Scotland. Scotland, Ireland. Ooh. And they did a bunch of cool shit, and they brought back a fuckload of booze! I saw that. A bunch of scotch, like a shitload of it, and of different kinds, shapes, makes, and bimfs. And uh, one of them is, I think, the best name I've ever heard. Uh, one of my favorite scotches that they brought back, it's tasty, at least to me, uh, is called Clontarf. <laughs> And the second I saw the name, I'm like, that's like an insult you lob at somebody. <laughs> you clown tarf. You fucking clown tarf. It sounds like a race in Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wolf, we have to meet with the clown tarf uh, <laughs> emissaries. <laughs> and you've killed one of them. <laughs> it's the only time I actually killed somebody, and it's a bad thing. <laughs> I landed on him when falling down after being hit, struck by a child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Worf. Did you, oh, Worf, you silly did, fuck. Did you hear that the uh, the real actor who played um, Alexander died? Yes. Oh. I did. Alexander uh, was Worf's son for the uninitiated in Star Trek The Next Generation. 
It was... uh, I did hear Alexander bid it. Do you know? Do we know what he bid it of? So, like, I guess he uh, sort of outgrew being a child star and got like involved in like the music industry. Um, mm. I think he became some somewhat well known as like a DJ or something, and then I guess he got involved with. Uh, drugs and you know the usual thing happened he, mm. he fell in with the wrong crowd he took too much of the drug one night and then uh, somebody came in and killed him with a batlet um. <laughs> 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 you fucking clontarfed us on that one dude Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna spit out my water. <laughs> right on the microphone. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Today is episode of Frank is Not Control. <laughs> it's brought to you by Mermaid Land. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Mermaid Land. Not to be confused with SeaWorld, the only things we torture are people <laughs> in fish bottoms. <laughs> Speaking of uh, torturing things, uh, we got Pumpkin a Halloween costume. Oh! Aww. Pumpkin it's, is B Rise adorable cat. He uh he, you need to start posting pictures of Pumpkin to our Twitter so we can get all the views. Oh yes, that will draw such, the people. Such a photogenic cat it'll get shared it's around the so internet. Beautiful. That handsome boy. He's so hungry. He's a very hungry, very loud boy. <laughs> I, uh, I finally did meet him. He screams a lot. No. Like if you go into the kitchen and start like I was making paper mache glue. <laughs> like the least tasty thing possible. And I'm just cooking that up and he's at my hands. Like, shut up. <laughs> Nobody wants this. <laughs> I will drink it, human. <laughs> I don't know until I try it. <laughs> I wish to be as sticky on the inside as I am on the outside. Oh, as God. he rubs himself with more barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. Don't think I didn't forget that. Uh, no, we got him a hot dog costume. Oh, oh, and, he's going to hate it. Oh, he does hate it. He hates it real <laughs> bad. Uh, he does this thing when we put it on him. It's the same thing that happens when, like, Lissa... Uh, throws like a blanket over him or any any little thing like that that you you do to gently mess with your your pets and like when it's on him it's it does not restrict him at all he he fits the costume it's not tight on him uh it doesn't restrict his movement but he doesn't realize that it doesn't restrict his movement so Mm -hmm. he just sort of shuts down (laughs) and just sort of hunkers down and looks real miserable and just sits there waiting for the end uh, (laughs) waiting for the mustard I I think the best way to get him used to it would be to put him put, in it all the time. Put it put it on him for like uh, you know about twenty minutes, long enough for him to get used to it being on. And what then, I like, want to know is how you're able to get a fucking costume onto a cat. You'd expect that'd be like trying to put a costume on one of those novelty sea cucumber things that slip out of your hands, <laughs> but they also have knives attached to four <laughs> corners of it. He's actually quite easy to do that, and like it's pretty easy to get his collar on and off too. Like it, you know, he he sits still for it. Uh, the hot dog costume is very simple. It just has like it folds over the back, and it has like a velcro strap on the neck mm-hmm. and like around the middle, and it's just those two straps. So you get one, and then it's sort of on, and then you just get the other one, and he just sort of sits there. You know, he's a placid boy as it is, but he also like. You know, you you can complete the process before he realizes what's going on. <laughs> wow! And uh, then it's he's a, like, it's a "Oh, quick hot dog! Wait a minute, I've been had." <laughs> <laughs> this isn't food. What's Why'd all you this? Do this then? To me? What's all this then? And uh, he's British. He's a British cat. He Who has knows? he meows in British. He has his pumpkin's human voice is Jerry Jewell's British accent when he's Speedwagon the Younger in uh, <laughs> the first season of JoJo's. <laughs> <laughs> he just says blimey every other word. Yeah. Cool, cool, blimey. <laughs> Speedwagon. Ah, uh, what a fine, what a fine anime it is that they're Jojus. I was also going to say, um, on the, the subject of Halloween, um, FXX has been... Um, My favorite PlayStation snowboarding game. That's... Oh, wait. What is that one called? It's SSX. SSX. Uh, so, Tricky! Uh, FXX is uh, airing, or has been airing. It's too late now, as if you're listening to this. Um, but they have been airing all like every night. They've just been doing... like runs of, of like all the Treehouse of Horror episodes of The Simpsons. Oh, so yeah. Cool. So it's been it's been pretty fun. I've been watching that a lot. Yeah. Uh and I you know, they had some of the classics um that I enjoyed watching and then they had some of the newer seasons that are uh you know that I haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. 
and one of them like kind of legitimately fucked me up. Oh. And it just revolved around Homer becoming addicted to auto cannibalism. Oh jeez. And like <laughs> eating himself, <laughs> and, like cutting his own fingers off and oh. eating them. And I was like, this is a horror show. This is like a fucking bad dream. Like, this is really really unpleasant. Yeah, you know, like, they uh, get guest uh, animators to do the beginning couch gags for yeah. the show sometimes. They got a guest director as Junji Ito. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what? I tried to write it uh, light, you know, for the American audience. <laughs> this is, uh... I went easy on him. <laughs> I honestly want to see that now. Junji Ito. Junji Ito directing The Simpsons. <laughs> I mean, like, you've seen his Pokemon crossover work, right? What? Yeah, he, um, I, th- I think it was part of a bigger project, but all I've really seen of it is, like, a couple paintings of, uh, Junji Ito drawing Pokemon, doing creepy things. So, like, there's a, a Gengar, like, slurping up a woman, there's a, oh. uh, a kid with, like, a, a, like, a bayonet doll, and, like, the actual bayonet is, uh, like, about to get her, and oh. a couple others. Those I've are the only two I remember. I've seen those. I saw the one with the Gengar eating the woman, and I was like, that woman looks too much like Junji Ito's art style for this to be fan art trying to look like Junji Ito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Some fans are really fucking good yeah. at copying styles. It's kind of nuts. Like that uh, crazy... This happened a couple of years ago, that crazy series of One Piece fan art where this guy was drawing uh, the One Piece characters as Overwatch characters. Oh, yeah. And they were fucking spot goddamn on. It was yeah. really impressive. Like, that kind of shit, man. I just It takes a, an artist of a different kind to copy someone's style and then run with it like that so well. Yeah. That's uh, someone using their talent for good instead of immediately doing X-rated doujinshi. I mean, they probably do that, too. We just yeah. don't know about it. I don't yeah. know anything about that artist. x Guy Chan, I think his name was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, there have been times where I've considered, like, diving into that world, if we're being perfectly honest, if we're real talking right now. Mm -hmm. There have been times where I'm like, I'm actually pretty good at drawing smut. (laughs) Maybe I should make a career of it. That's where the money is. I, that is where the money is. And then if you get, if you slap on a tail and some ears on that shit, you'll make double the money. Because furries, for some reason, have lots of money. Because they all work in IT. And they're all (laughs) single. So they don't have anything to spend their money on, except wow. for their, their passion. Their own proclivities. Yeah. Wow. I, that's it. Guys, as of right now, I'm getting into the Fernie, Fernie Pornish business. <laughs> Fernie Sanders. Fernie. I'm going to get, a, that'll be my first client. <laughs> Furry Sanders. Yeah. Like, it turns out, Bernie Sanders is a closeted furry this whole time. Uh-huh. And then he just, he contacts me under the alias Fernie Sanders <laughs> and expects me not to know. <laughs> Somehow his emails are in his accent. <laughs> I would like an inflation drawing. <laughs> Sorry. I would like an inflation fetish drawing. <laughs> I want you to draw Robin Hood blowing up into a balloon. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, Fernie Sanders, uh, you rap scallion. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, wow. So, yeah. No, I'm not actually going to do that, by the way. I'm not going to go. I, I stoop to many levels, but that is not one of them. <laughs> Particularly because I don't need to. I'm yeah. not that desperate. <laughs> Next uh, time you got bills to pay, though. Exactly. Next time I got that uh, crippling medical bill from the time I decided to build a rocket car out of gasoline. <laughs> and also you had gout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I expect to see... You know, you're like, well, like so, uh, Mr. Russell, what brings you in here today? Well, I, uh, I made a, a, a rocket car entirely out of gasoline, and I drove it straight into a wall... And I just don't feel so good after that. Hmm. They look at you, they just like poke you a few times. Does this hurt? Yes. You have gout. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that'll be it. I, for the record, I don't think I have gout. You didn't. I didn't. I just, people, especially particular brothers of mine who will remain nameless, Brian. <laughs> They keep saying I have gout, and I don't. I don't have gout. It was just a weird foot 
thing. You had turf toe, Bobby. The the gout medicine didn't work on it, but the infection medicine worked on it instantly. You just had a weird toe infection. But it is a funny story. It because is. you get to imitate Hank Hill and go, Oh, that's an old man's <laughs> disease, boy! I, t- I tell you and I've had enough. <laughs> Speaking of, I tell you and I had enough, um, my, like... My sense of eat is all fucked up. I know I'm a man of of uh, much needed routine, and I found that out today because I woke up uh, on my own. Mm-hmm. Thank Christ! Um, I woke up and I'm like, my eyes shot open like Squidward. I'm like, it's too bright, and I look at my clock, and my alarm didn't go off uh-huh. for some fuck ass reason because I hate my phone, and uh, I miss my alarm, and I'm. You know, it's it's pretty much already 15 minutes past when I need to be on the goddamn road. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck! So, uh, yeah, I just jump into my scrubs and fucking bolt. And I didn't eat breakfast. And it fucked me up today. <laughs> uh, by lunch, I turned into this ravenous beast that could not be sated. Far more than the usual ravenous beast that can be sated. Yeah. Just by a lot. No, like, I went... I went to a fucking Burger King. This is how bad it was. Because <laughs> I knew that Whoppers were larger than most other uh, sandwiches offered to buy fast food restaurants. Yeah. So I went to a fucking Burger King, and I'm like, I'll take the large everything, please, thank you. <laughs> I fucking destroyed that in, like, I shit you not, five minutes. It was gone. All of it. That horrible, disgusting gut bomb of a sandwich <laughs> and the large fries just gone. And I just... <laughs> was sitting in my car with all this rest of my lunch break done and I'm just sort of looking around my I'm looking around myself like the end of that one Don't Hug Me I'm Scared episode where the guy's been eating his friends and he's really fat Mm -hmm. and he's just looking around at all the like bloody (laughs) all the bloody death around him and I felt like that (laughs) but replace all the gore with uh, sandwich bags yeah (laughs) and The worst part is it totally hit the spot. Yep. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but it absolutely hit the spot. This episode of Frankenstein Control is brought to you by the Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> go, to your, <laughs> go to your nearest, go to your nearest Burger King and get a Whopper. Throw it directly in the bimf. <laughs> <laughs> I really fucking want a Whopper right now, man. <laughs> like, I'm seriously, you made me hungry. I love Whoppers. They taste good. I, I that's why I said it hit the spot as much as I hate to admit it. It was really, it was great. It might have just been the extreme hunger, but it was fantastic. And it just, I felt at one. <laughs> <laughs> I were, took a bite of that Berg. For a moment, you had uh, achieved Nirvana. Uh, Bergvana. Bergvana. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know much about Bergvana, but I bet your car really smelled like Teen Spirit, if you know what I mean. It does. It does smell like Teen Spirit. Oh God, there's so much Whopper smell now. I just, I can't. You can't wash that out. It's a curse. It's worse than zoo smells. <laughs> it gets into your, it gets into your pores. It gets. What zoo smells? <laughs> I, I know that word for a reason, and I can't remember if it's good. Um, before. Andrew Hussey did Homestuck and Problem Sleuth. He did a series of really stupid web comics, and one of them. What was the name of those web comics, Ada? Um, I'm not gonna say it because it's offensive. It's 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 offensive, but it's also absurd. And like, it's over now, and he's not gonna do it again. You can say it. It was called Team Special Olympics. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, but anyway, there were a lot of. Really dumb comics, and one of them is just about this guy that likes to smell animals or something, and like go to the zoo and stiff his like stick his face into an animal and just sniff, and it's called zoo smells. <laughs> that that sounds like something Hussey would make. Yeah. Uh, the, the, but what's so good about it is when I first read that, it was instantly relatable to me. No, what? No, because I. 
I know exactly what that smell is. Oh, and yeah. And yeah. despite the fact that it's disgusting, it's linked with me going to like the zoo or Maymont Park and having a good time with my family. Yeah. Oh, so like, okay. it's an awful smell linked to a great memory. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like so, the, <laughs> the rest, you know, like the smell of the reptile house or something. Yeah. You know, when oh, you go there and you're or like, the, uh, or the um, the ape house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, What's it? Primate house. The primate house at the DC Zoo. Maybe they've changed it. I don't think they have. Mm-hmm. But I remember when I was a young and I went on a field trip to Washington DC Zoo I went in there and the smell blew me out the door <laughs> like the minute they opened that threshold a brown Kamea wave just smacked me it sent me into space I that, that house won the cell games I'll tell you that much <laughs> That shit was ridiculous. It was so bad. It was the worst doo-doo smell you've it's, ever experienced. It's bad. It was horrid. It was torrid. <laughs> the the shoe house. The, the plus size women's store. That's the to buy shoes. That's the one. The, it was turgid. <laughs> oh, that's an awful word. The, uh. the smell itself was turgid. It was, don't go to the ape house if you go to the zoo. Just spend a good old time at, I don't know, the spider house. I, I if you love... kill all the spiders in there... <laughs> spiders are friends. If you kill all the spiders there, you get a bigger wallet. Oh. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time reference. What a jokey joke. If you kill enough sculptulas and get enough gold you sculpture tokens... You a gorillion rupus in there. You can redeem them for a large wallet. <laughs> I, I love animals and I love the zoo and I grew up uh, loving all of those things immensely I, and I uh, always have love you know learning about them drawing them thinking about them uh, Ada and I have that in common a lot we grew up reading animal books for fun and uh, there was one time that's particularly memorable when I went to the zoo with my mom when I was about seven years old and like Every single animal that we saw in succession that day, as soon as we got there, took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> the world is a carousel of feces. Uh, and it's a perfect metaphor for our world. Yeah. <laughs> and much like our world, we too are dying. Oh, I'm drowning in the feces. Be right quick. Get the bim. I've already gone numb. Now even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secrets to save the entire human race and the entire universe.